If you think customizable lights for the Mini 2, which you can even control from the remote, is cool, you gotta keep watching. Hi guys, it's Ole here. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use this RGB color sensor to create nine customizable programs for the Mini 2. It's an APDS 9960. And as you know, on the Mini 2, there is a front LED, which color can be changed from the remote, nine different colors. So we can assign nine specific functions to it. This sensor is actually used in Samsung smartphones, so it's, it's quite a good sensor. This is how it is going to be mounted on the front of the, of the drone. There is the front LED and it has to be placed very precisely because on the sensor there is this little window, that's where the color sensing is actually happening. I will use several other components, there will be a schematic later. I don't want to go too much into the build. This is the LED uh, assortment I'm using. These are high powered RGBW LEDs. This is how I mounted them. And now I'm going to check the function of this sensor. This is the software I'm using, the code. I got it from the Arduino library from SparkFun. This is the library, SparkFun, APDS 9960 RGB and gesture sensor. And this is the sketch, which I'm using the color sensor mode to check how accurate is this sensor and how does it work. So I uploaded the sketch and in the serial monitor, we will see in a moment how this little sensor is actually breaking down the light to ambient red, green and blue components. It's quite accurate. It can even sense the light coming, going through my fingers. I have to cover it fully to go down, otherwise it senses, because it can be used also for pulse sensing and everything. It's, it's a quite neat sensor. This is how it looks, one more close up of it. And this is where it goes. And now, as you can see, it can wobble quite a bit. So I'm using this epoxy uh, putty or, or uh, like a clay, basically, to to fix it to that location and make it to not wobble. It's important because if it wobbles back and forth, the values can change and the readings are not going to be accurate as accurate. So I put some aluminium uh, tape on the drone because of course I don't want to put this epoxy on the housing of the drone on the case straight. This is how it looks. That's fine, I think. And then after uh, kneading this uh, uh, thing, I mean, yeah, probably I should have used some gloves. It's, uh, it's pretty messy, but fine. So I made it like this and just tacked on. And then I uploaded the code again and started to see in the serial monitor the readings. I put the, the drone light on to white and I'm adjusting it to make sure that I have the best possible reading, the highest numbers. And then I, I filled around the sensor fully with this uh, epoxy clay thing to make sure that no ambient light is getting into the sensor. So I'm actually really sensing only the color of the, the LED, regardless if it's if the drone is in dark or it's in direct sunlight. This electrical tape is just for electrical, electrical uh, insulation because I just want to cover it up with another layer of aluminum tape, not for the light protection, but just to make it look nicer because it's anyway something mounted on the front of the drone, but like this, it becomes quite a nice package. It's not in the way of the gimbal. I checked, it does not get into the view of the camera. So it's it's quite fine. So these are the old uh, components I'm using. The 7805 regulator is only needed because the LEDs are high power, so they need to have some five volts from somewhere. And that's going to be from that because the Arduino cannot, su cannot supply that much power, which the LEDs need. And this uh, device, this APDS uh, 9960 is a 3.3 volt device. Do not connect it to 5 volt, otherwise you're going to see it go up in flames. No, but really. And then uh, it's I squared C, so it's connected to the Arduino, but their level, logic level shifting is necessary. This is what that two... Uh, MOSFETs are on the left. It, you can check it up on the internet. It's quite a cool way of doing logic level shifting. There should be 
pull up resistors on both sides but as far as it's i squared c it's anyway part of the part of the port so to say there are already pull up resistors both in the arduino and in the device itself this is how the leds are connected up it's pretty straightforward pause it uh, to decipher it for yourself i'm not using any current limiting resistors for the leds because i decided to just use pwm pulse with modulation on the outputs of the arduino to achieve the highest possible light with the lowest uh, consumption but uh, please do not connect these leds straight to the arduino because it will destroy the arduino and please do not connect them straight to 5 volt because it will destroy the leds so this is the schematic to use don't uh, don't cheap out on it don't change much on it unless you know exactly what you're doing anyway so here is the code i'm not going to go into explaining the code here because uh, it is rather long as you can see and it's quite complicated it could be made much better uh, but it does work but what is very important the first part of the code here this is for manual calibration because every assembly is going to be different. You're going to place the sensor a little bit different than I did. Your drone's LED may be not as bright as mine or more bright than mine. Your sensor has maybe a little bit different. It is with color sensing, it's always important to have a baseline and this is the calibration to be done. So every color on the remote has to be written up these, these values. Otherwise it will not work. The software auto calibrates after with every startup, but it need to have a baseline. So these numbers will change for your version if you are doing it, if you decide to do this mod. So this is my fast soldering process. So that just we have a little bit of soldering and here is how it looks. It's quite neatly packed up. I think it doesn't look too crazy. And some of the functions here are shown for you but uh, let's do a proper test. So this is first the indoor test because the outdoor test was really hard for the camera to focus. So here you can see better the functions, but we will go outside in the dark. So you will see that. So this is a landing light, which is doing nothing else, just showing the road. And then we have a steady red light version. And then the next one is the red flashing. I mean, this project was inspired by one of my viewers who wanted to do some aviation uh, compliant lighting on the drones so as far as i know these are by the by the frequency of the flashing and the, the modes of operation are actually kind of aviation uh, uh, compliant don't don't quote me on that this is my information which i got so this is like an kind of an emergency signal and this last one is is just a very cool one to have a triple flash of all the leds now you will uh, i will show you all the and this is the landing light as i said in the beginning so i will show you one more the functions without having the remote in the in the screen all the time backwards so here is this uh, cool one and then as you can as you, as you see it can be changed from the remote and of course the range of this is just the range of the remote which is like what eight kilometers or something like this so i don't know how often people need to change a lighting function on the drone in flight but now you have the chance to do it and this can be customized however you want all the leds are rgbw leds so any color can be represent represented uh, it's just a change, a little bit change on the schematic and a little bit change in the code. But let's go outside, let's see how it does in the dark. So on, you can see how I'm pressing the buttons, buttons so to say, this uh, color modes. So this is the steady red on. And now is the red flashing. I mean the visible, I mean yeah, <laughs> sorry for the focus, it was just, I did it several times and it was for me it was impossible to focus. I really need a million subscribers to get some good cameras so i can manually focus guys anyways <laughs> so the visibility is fantastic i mean these leds are uh, four uh, watts like one watt each color on each led so it was really cool now i will just uh, fly out with the drone a little bit further away but uh, 
I honestly, like in real life, it even looks better. There was no problem whatsoever to see this drone. It was so visible. I was a little bit uh, wondering if someone is going to walk up to me because I went out to a field anyways. But uh, you will see just in a moment on the right corner down. So uh, it was just 140 meters out roughly and 30 meters uh, high, which is not super far away, but uh, it was really easy to see. And yeah, as, as you can see, you can change the the function. Now, of course, uh, you know, this is what, what does it mean? You can have actually nine different functions. So the from the remote, just by choosing a color, you can make the microcontroller to do something. In this case, it's just light programs. But if you haven't seen my uh, payload uh, dropper video, you can see that uh, that can be also done. Just in a moment, you will see how great the landing light is actually in, in this dark environment to land. So the possibilities are truly enormous. You can do anything with this because the microcontroller can actuate after a servo or uh, light another light or start a GoPro or landing. I don't know, whatever. It's just nine different functions. So anyways, this is all for today, guys. I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you have anything to say or if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. Check out my other videos if you're interested in this subject and hit that subscribe button so that I can get the new camera. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.